you're tuning in live to Military Images this evening, I'm Ron Coddington, the editor and publisher, coming to you from our headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. I hope all of you are doing well and have had a great weekend. I am uh, going to give a couple of minutes to um, let folks begin to join in uh, when I see uh, more than a few names pop up. We'll get the show on the road. See an old friend, Alan Rudolph is in. Hello, Mr. Rudolph. Hello, Fred, Michael. How are you all doing tonight? Trust everybody's doing just fine. Back to work after a weekend. I hope it was a nice one for everyone. It was uh, generally sunny where I was. I'll get to that in a minute. Although I didn't spend a whole lot of it outdoors, I was mostly indoors. Hello, I see a couple new folks uh, signing on. Rich, welcome to Military Images Live. We'll give it just another minute and then we'll get started. Let's see, uh, Carol Coddington has joined us. Hello, mom. <laughs> Got a good crowd tonight. I think we'll get started in just a few more seconds. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what has happened uh, the last week uh, uh, regarding my interactions with Civil War photography, a little bit about my travels at this past week. And uh, I'll start out by saying it's been a very eventful week. Hello, Dennis. Great to have you here. Uh, it's been event an eventful week. I was on the road for a good part of it. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I was I did quite a bit of traveling, and it reminded me of two words that I use fairly often when I'm talking about photography and Civil War photographs. We tend to think about them uh, as individual items, and uh, we know that many of them have stories to tell. Sometimes it's an identified soldier. Other times it's something that's unique about the image itself. Uh, the two things that I like to concentrate on are how we can use them for education and to raise awareness about our history. And uh, that education awareness comes in many, many different ways. So these two words are really, really important to me. Uh, this weekend, I had two more words that uh, I can add to that. I like to think of myself as a student of history certainly not as an ex expert, there's always something to learn. And uh, this, work, this weekend, while I was uh, heading out to Chicago, I uh, took a break. Um, in fact, I took an extra day and uh, went up to the museum uh, over the border uh, of Illinois into Wisconsin in the town of Kenosha and uh, visited their Civil War Museum. And I've got to tell you, I came away unbelievably impressed. Uh, Here's a few more words that I can show you. Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, and Ohio. These are the states in the upper Midwest that contributed, and I did not know this going in, uh, a million men, a million volunteers in uniform to the Civil War time effort. So they have an amazing museum in, as I mentioned, Kenosha, and uh, it's uh, the Civil War Museum Upper Middle West Experience. So uh, state-of-the-art facility, beautiful building, as you can see here, very modern. I believe it's about 10 years old, has an incredible 360-degree movie. You can sit in a chair. The movie is going on all around you. Uh, strong stereo music. Get a sense of the stories of men from apart from across the upper Midwest, uh, what their experience was like, and a lot about all the battles that they participated in. The exhibits, too, are really um, quite interesting. They use a lot of, uh, I, I think you could call them mannequins. Um, they appear to be mostly wax figures of soldiers dressed in uniforms. The museum has a very interactive feel because these uh, figures are all around the museum, and uh, you can't help but walk past them and interact with them. 
I met with Doug Dahman, who was one of the curators there. And uh, Doug confided to me that uh, some of the little kids sometimes got a little scared when they saw these big soldiers towering over them, which I suppose is understandable. Uh, most folks and most kids actually get a whole lot out of the museum because they get a chance to interact with the exhibits, to walk closely, to um, see what, uh, what the war experience was like from people from that part of the country. Uh, Doug um, also mentioned, which I thought was quite interesting, um, talked a lot about the many of the foodstuffs and many of the supplies for the northern armies are coming from this part of the country. So when you think about the million men that came out of those six states, and then you think about all the workers that were behind to make sure that the uh, agricultural goods, the produce, uh, the various meats and everything else coming out of this region, raw materials uh, coming out of this region, is something pretty impressive. They really put quite a lot into the war effort. So I want to highly recommend the uh, museum in Kenosha. Uh, see Doug Dahman. And by the way, um, uh, Doug is the son of Gordon Dahman. That name may ring a bell to some of you. Uh, Gordon is uh, the principal uh, individual connected with the medical museum in Frederick. Uh, Maryland. If you've been there, you'll recognize some of the same style of exhibits with the uh, mannequins. There's a lot of attention to detail here, a fair amount of relics that are on display, including an amazing number of photographs. So I took an extra day um, to spend at the museum, and I'm really glad I did because it got me thinking about uh, what the war experience was like in that part of the country. And um, in a way, it sort of put me in the maybe the right frame of mind for the uh, Wheaton Civil War show or the Chicago Civil War show that's put on by Zerko Productions. And that was uh, this past Saturday, just a couple of days ago. And uh, the show itself, uh, I want to give you, um, I, I think it's actually a good example of uh, what military images will do at the shows. Uh, those of you who have seen us at the shows, you know that we've got a table set up. Uh, and of course, we're very interested in welcoming new subscribers uh, to sign up. We're also looking for story ideas. And as we talk with individuals who come by our table and engage in conversation, we get their perspectives and get an idea of what kind of stories they're looking for. And um, that can help us as we're planning out future issues. Uh, perhaps the, the biggest uh, bonus to going to the Civil War shows and uh, to the, the Wheaton show in particular is uh, scanning images. Um, folks will bring in images. Uh, I'll also meet dealers that have images. And it is not unusual to make more than 100 scans over the course of a two-day show. Uh, and that includes a third day for the dealer setup day. In this case, because it was a one-day show, I really had two days, and again, more than 100 scans. So uh, I was cranking pretty much most of dealer setup day, and on Saturday, scanning images, and uh, a number of those will appear in future issues. So I thought I'd take the rest of the program to share a little bit of what I scanned. It's sort of an eclectic group because they're coming from dealers across the country, some local, some regional, and uh, it will give you maybe a good flavor of what it's like to be on the military images side of the table behind the scanner. So let's dig in. I'm going to start with uh, a few images. And um, these come from the collection of Austin Sundstrom. Uh, Austin and I started chatting on uh, Facebook about uh, images of uh, individuals, of soldiers who had stories to tell around the Battle of Shiloh. Uh, and of course, the upper Midwest regiments are a big part of the Battle of Shiloh and many Western battles. And we've got a gallery planned of representative images from Shiloh. We're looking for those who were killed, wounded, uh, captured, or have an interesting story to tell. Perhaps they captured a flag, perhaps they carried an important order, something along those lines. So we've been advertising for the better part of a year now, and we've been collecting images for this gallery. So um, this is one of the images from the uh, first, uh, I believe it's the first Illinois, I'm going to cheat here and peek, 
uh, from the 1st Illinois Light Artillery. This is uh, a soldier who was injured. This is just the beginning of the process, by the way. Um, over the, in the coming months, I'll be working with Austin to get some of the information he's collected. Um, we'll be doing some additional research on our own. And at the end, we'll write a caption that gives you a bit about his story, uh, his military experience, and his life experience. And by the way, all these gentlemen are named, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to give you their regiments. Uh, here we have uh, a member, uh, another Shiloh casualty, again from Austin's collection. Austin is particularly interested in the 55th Illinois Infantry. This is a soldier um, from that regiment. And here's another soldier, again, another casualty uh, of the 55th. So uh, there's a lot more from Austin's collection that we scanned. Moving along, uh, we also scanned images from Brian Booby's collection. Um, Brian is a longtime contributor to the magazine, and he's also one of our senior editors. He brought in this wonderful ambrotype. It's a little dark here. It's a, a infantryman from the second Iowa who was a casualty at Shiloh. Uh, Brian also took the opportunity to bring in uh, several other images from his collection. Um, that we hadn't scanned and hadn't featured in the magazine in previous issues. And uh, they include a few uh, Confederates that uh, made it to Chicago. Um, this gentleman here who has a really interesting um, shirt on. Um, nowadays we call it a battle shirt. Back then it was really actually thought of as a hunting shirt um, worn primarily by Confederates. You'll see the buttons on either side of his pockets. Uh, in this case, he has it open to reveal a crisp white shirt. A tie is carrying a revolver. Uh, you can see his, uh, what appears to be a cartridge box or a haversack over to the side and a civilian style hat. Um, we'll do research on that to try to get some sense of uh, maybe where he came from. Um, Brian also brought in uh, a wonderful image of a Union drummer, absolutely crystal clear. We'll be doing some work to investigate the painting um, on the drum to try to maybe help us out with uh, some identity. Uh, if you like uh, guys that pretty much have just enlisted and have it all, uh, we have this unidentified infantryman. You can see his uh, weatherproof haversack right up in the front here. It's shiny um, from the um, covering that was put on it to keep it rainproof, basically. And you'll see a, a tangle of straps up here. Um, you got his waist belt plate for his cartridge box. Um, you can see the cloth strap that uh, was probably for a haversack or canteen. Straps connected to his backpack. You can see his bedroll coming in the back there. And of course, he has his musket with the bayonet affixed. So there's a lot um, to explore there in terms of equipment. And this gives you a pretty good idea of what the uh, average soldier, the average enlisted man, the kind of uh, equipment that they received. Got the gentleman here. He's, um, uh, this infantryman is one of a group of at least six that are attributed to a photographer that we're just calling anonymous at this time. There's something distinctive about this photograph and about the other five that are in this particular grouping. Take a close look at the uh, plate on his, uh, on his breast, his breastplate, and uh, take a look at his waist belt plate. Notice that around the edges, it has been tinted gold. Now, those of you, especially if you're collectors, you know that oftentimes the photographer basically covered the whole plate with gold, which of course to us nowadays uh, makes us crazy because we want to be able to see, somehow magically see through that tint to be able to find out what kind of embossing on, uh, is, uh, is on it, what kind of plate it really was. Well here, the photographer has done us a bit of a favor because he's only added the tinting around the very edges so you can still see the, uh, the embossing on the plate. And in this case, perfectly preserved standard issue uh, U.S. plates. Here we've got um, a couple of folks, uh, a couple of soldiers, uh, revolvers tucked in their pockets, a very elaborate camp backdrop, again from the Brian Boothie collection. Some very nice light tinting on the trousers, as you can see, 
uh, and absolutely crystal clear. So um, one of a grouping that Brian bought in. Um, I want to move along now. Um, another image that we received. This comes from the collection of Rex Knight. This is actually for sale uh, at the show. And I honestly don't know if it ever sold, but Rex brought it over early on because he was quite interested to get my view on uh, what I think is a really rare combination. Um, those of you who know uh, Reese, uh, the photographer from Richmond, um, will immediately recognize the um, the, um, the back of the mount and the name uh, and embossing. It has Reason Brother of Richmond, Virginia. You'll also see that there is an Internal Revenue Service stamp. This one happens to be dated September of 1865. Uh, you can see the very large September, the 65 is a little bit harder to see. Um, that um, in itself, I wouldn't say it's exactly uncommon. Um, there are a number of Reese carts de visite out there that have these same characteristics. What is interesting is the subject. The subject appears to be a Union soldier. And uh, um, there, are, of course, are many Confederates that Reese took during his time, during the war in Richmond. Uh, images of Union soldiers taken after the end of hostilities when Richmond was occupied for a certain period of time are far rarer. They exist, but you don't see them that often. Um, so Rex brought this example in. Um, some work needs to be done down here. You can barely see in pencil the name. It appears to be Peter Bailey that's written on it. Um, there's some research done, I think linking him to a Pennsylvania Infantry Regiment. I'm not quite sure about that because the service records indicate a much older man and this is a much younger man. So there's more work to be done here and we're gonna see what we can find out about him. Uh, another image that I scanned happened to be from the dealer who was sitting right next to me. Uh, Don Andrew was there. He had uh, his table set up with a bunch of relics for sale, including a number of photographs. And um, he has this image of Benjamin C. Jones of the 149th Pennsylvania. Uh, Don, I learned, is a, uh, uh, a serious researcher. He really gets into it. He loves digging around and finding information so he can tell the stories of these soldiers. So this is one of Don's works in progress. And uh, it's a really great image. Um, some of you who are interested in equipment and weapons, uh, you might look at this photograph and perhaps not be wowed by it, but the condition and the quality is absolutely pristine. Uh, he's sitting here with his corporal stripes on. He has an identification shield right up here pinned to his vest. You can see his watch chain. Um, he's got uh, his company logo, uh, or pardon me, his company letter on top of his hat. So uh, just a beautiful image, very, very well focused. So we're gonna keep up with Don and find out what is he, what he's able to, uh, to tell us about this soldier. Um, I mentioned Austin Sundstrom earlier. His um, uncle, uh, Carl, was also there. Uh, in fact, uh, we all went out to eat on Saturday night um, after the show, Carl Sundstrom, Jerry Evers and some other folks had a really nice time, got to chat about uh, our common interests, so it was great. Um, this gentleman is particularly interesting, um, William H. Wright of the 58th Massachusetts. Um, it's a fairly standard pose of sitting, sitting here in a chair. Um, what's really quite interesting is the medal that he wears pinned to his chest. Um, this medal uh, we've tra traced to be um, uh, something that's called the Indian Mutiny Medal that was uh, given to him during his service in the British Army prior to him coming over to the Civil War. So this is not common to find uh, a Union soldier wearing a medal celebrating, um, in fact, uh, the, as the story goes, it was awarded to him by the Queen. That story may be a little suspect, but uh, he certainly wears this medal with pride, um, not only for whatever deeds he did when he was in the British Army, but also to celebrate his heritage and the fact that he wears it pinned to his union, union uniform sort of makes a neat connection between his, uh, the country of his nativity and his adopted homeland. Um, some other images 
Uh, this guy, William H. Noble, Colonel of the 17th Connecticut, um, uh, also from Carl's collection. Um, just, you gotta love the, the beard and the hair uh, on this officer. Really dignified pose. Big story behind him, 17th Connecticut Infantry. Um, Carl, I should mention, is uh, his particular interest area is the Union's 11th Corps. And uh, many of you know that the longtime commander of that corps was uh, Oliver Otis Howard. Um, one thing I learned while I was at the show um, from uh, Carl is that um, uh, Oliver Otis Howard had a brother, Charles. This is Charles who served as an aide de camp um, to his brother. Also from Carl's collection is this group, Colonel William H. Graves of the 12th Michigan Infantry and um, some of his subordinates. Um, those of you who are following us on Facebook during the show saw me post uh, this image as part of a larger collections, or pardon me, a larger grouping that uh, I scanned on Friday night. And um, I wanted to show this image just because we're sort of all scratching our heads about it. Um, you've got uh, uh, a Navy officer uh, seated over here, um, a couple of civilians with him, and you may not may have a hard time reading the inscription, uh, but it says, uh, when shall we four meet again? It's a very nice sentiment. Um, only the part that made us scratch our heads is, where's the four coming from? Because I can only see three. If you turn the photograph over and look on the back, there's this very unusual drawing um, that sort of looks like um, uh, Gumby, if you're uh, familiar with the 1960s, 1970s uh, animated figure, uh, an action toy. Um, or I don't know what's going on there, but is that the fourth person? I have no idea. Um, but these guys are not identified. There's no, uh, um, no information on the back. The photographer's name is on the front below the, uh, the image on the mount. So we'll do a little digging around and see what we can find there. Um, also uh, at the show, I met Rick Carlisle. And uh, these are the last few images that I'm gonna show you tonight. And um, Rick came over as he often does with uh, ideas for surveys that we could do. And um, he gave me a pack of images and um, he said, hey, um, I'm thinking about this gallery that we could call optics. And uh, I opened the uh, envelope and the first image that I saw was this pretty incredible view of an officer with his binoculars case around his neck. You can see the leather strap, you can see the case itself. And then next to him is um, another case that you can see open, it's sitting on a table. And um, I, I, I haven't looked at it, under it, at it under high magnification, but it almost looks like it's a pair of spurs. So uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. He certainly just has a pair of dress shoes on. So maybe that's intended to go on a pair of boots. Um, but the binoculars is certainly uh, a wonderful and um, uncommon piece of equipment to see uh, in a photograph. So Rick had a bunch more. And um, this is another one. You can see this officer holding the gauntlets. He's got his boots on, his sword, uh, perhaps an aide de camp. You'll notice here he has a telescope that's folded up and it is on a leather strap that is uh, laying across his chest, the telescope at his side. So uh, we've got a bunch more of these images. We need to scan those, or pardon, we need to process all those. We have the scans. Um, I'm gonna put out a call to action. So if any of you have images uh, with binoculars, soldiers with binoculars, telescopes, sailors with telescopes. I'd like to know about them so that we can put together a smash up gallery for some time in the future. I also wanna put a call out, probably a final call at this point. We've received a number of fantastic images of soldiers with pipes. Uh, you may recall last year, we did a gallery of, um, or pardon me, we put out a call last year for cigars and soldiers with cigars and pipes. And I was initially expecting to do a single gallery that featured both. And I received so many um, contributions that I decided to split it in two. So the last issue, I should say the current issue, we featured uh, the great 
American Civil War cigar gallery that included about 20 images or so of soldiers with cigars. So I'm holding back on the pipes and uh, this one came in another image from the Rick Carlisle collection. You can see the pipe in his mouth, he's holding a revolver. So it'll be a great image to add to the pipe gallery. If you've got any, I would love to know about them. Um, so uh, that's sort of a sample of what it's like for me behind the table with the scanner uh, during a show. In this case, it was the Wheaton Show in Chicago. So um, I definitely want to recommend if you live in the Chicago area or the upper Midwest to make plans to go to the show next year. It's held in April and September. And while you're there, do what I did. Take an extra day and go visit the Civil War Museum in Kenosha. Uh, you, if you're moving quickly, you might spend, um, I'd say about an hour and a half uh, if you watch the movie and then uh, take a walk around the exhibits. If you really wanna get into it, I think you're gonna need a good three to four hours and leave some time to go into the gift shop. So with that, I'm gonna leave you all. Uh, wish you a great evening and uh, a great week to come. We'll be in touch next week with another episode. Until then, take care. Good night.